Now to headlines where you are, it's the ITV News. Hello, I'm Sangeeta Kandola. For many businesses in the capital, the news of any additional COVID restrictions being ruled out before New Year is a lifeline at what should be the busiest time of the year. But some say they still urgently need more clarity from the government. Those working in live events and at theatres say the uncertainty of what could happen in the coming months is devastating. Charlotte Cross reports. It isn't normally this quiet when Isabella gets to work. A live sound engineer, she works at clubs and venues across the capital. This should be her busiest time of year. But with COVID cases surging, parties and shows are being cancelled. I feel like it's Bye -bye. March 2020 all over again. So that kind of sensation in which you, you feel that you're abandoned, you, you need to think about finding another job. Uh, you're worried about the uh, paying the bills or, or mortgages and uh, so it, it feels really uh, strange, weird and I'm really worried about the future, to be honest. Despite no new restrictions from the government, it's a trend seen across live entertainment and it's already hit London's West End. Andrew Lloyd Webber's Cinderella has closed its doors until February, while Hamilton and The Lion King have also suffered pauses. Some of it is driven by anxiety, people cancelling tickets because they're worried about the spread of the Omicron variant. But many venues are also being hit by COVID cases among their cast and crew as well, putting pressure on the industry from both sides. Just before Christmas, the government announced an extra £30 million of support for the arts and creative sectors affected by coronavirus. But industry leaders say a different approach is needed. Spec2 has been arguing for a, a sort of flexible support package from the government which can be turned on and turned off dependent upon the circumstances so that if we get another new variant which really hits theatres and live events that there is support there ready which can just be turned on. And it's that uncertainty which people like Isabella are struggling with. We don't know uh, if we're going to work uh, the, the day after or New Year's Day, we, we don't know. We simply don't know, and that's, that's killing us. For now, she says, she's left in limbo. Charlotte Cross, ITV News. A 26-year-old man has been charged with the murder of a woman in Newham. The body of 29-year-old Kirsty Louise Ashley was found at an address in Earlham Grove on Boxing Day. Police had been called to the scene just before midday following concerns over her welfare. Yaya Abukar appeared at Thames Magistrates Court earlier today on suspicion of her murder. Detectives investigating the murder of a boy in Croydon have arrested a 16-year-old. Jermaine Cools, who was 14, was stabbed to death on London Road in November. Police had been called to reports of a fight involving a number of people close to West Croydon Station. They are continuing to appeal for information. Time for a look at today's sports news now. Small businesses and local teams, the heart of our communities. eBay sponsors ITV Regional Sport Reports. Crystal Palace climbed to ninth place in the Premier League table after a convincing 3-0 win over Norwich City. Edouard opened the scoring from the penalty spot before goals from Mateta and Schlupp sealed the victory. West Ham moved back into fifth after they won 4-1 against Watford. Captain Mark Noble found the net in his first start of the season. He's now scored in every year since 2006. And Tottenham had to settle for a point in their one-all draw with Southampton. They had two goals disallowed in the second half, but it now means Antonio Conte has become the first manager in Spurs history to be unbeaten in the first seven league games. Finally, there was a very special moment for one young QPR fan during half-time of their game yesterday. <laughs> Eight-year-old Felix Martino was invited onto the pitch with his big sister to ring a bell to signal the end of his treatment for leukaemia. He was given the all-clear recently so after being diagnosed three years ago.
Weather now, here's Chris. Making the most of it, whatever the weather. Octopus Energy sponsors ITV London weekday weather. Hello there. Very good evening to you. Over the next few days, the mild theme is going to be the talking points as those temperatures are set to rise as we head towards New Year's Eve. In fact, for New Year's Eve, temperatures could be so far above average, we could be looking at record-breaking temperatures into the well into the mid-teens for some places across the United Kingdom. Today, though, we've had an area of low pressure that brought some heavy rain at times, some strong winds first thing this morning. There was a little bit of sunshine, but it didn't last too long as the cloud started to move its way in. We've still got that cloud cover with us overnight tonight a few clear breaks, but by dawn tomorrow morning, the next system from the Atlantic pulls its way in, bringing further outbreaks of rain, but it will be a mild start. Temperatures around six to seven degrees. Another wet day to start first thing on Wednesday morning. Heavy rain at first, but it will be improving as we go through the day. That rain easing out to the east. Still a bit of a brisk breeze coming in from the southwest. But look at this. Temperatures 14 near 15 degrees Celsius, some seven to eight degrees above where they should be for this time of year. That mild theme continues into the new year, turning drier through Thursday with more brightness on New Year's Eve and into New Year's Day. Bye-bye. Octopus Energy sponsors ITV London weekday weather. That is all. Bye-bye.